Okay, so we just got this uh, 67 GTO 400 on the uh, uh, run stand, and we broke in the camshaft here last week, or uh, yeah, actually Monday this week, I think it was. And uh, so what we do is we don't put the inner valve spring in these engines to break the cam in with a flat tappet cam, because if you do, it uh, you have a chance of scuffing the uh, camshaft with a lifter because of the spring pressure. So we leave the inner spring out, which is the smaller spring of the uh, valve spring setup. Some springs are not duals, they just have a single spring, but this, uh, we always use a dual spring. But, uh, so what Brandon's doing right now is we're taking the, uh, uh, all the rockers off of this thing, and we're going to uh, put a little air in each cylinder, and then uh, use our valve spring removal tool for cylinder when it's on the cylinder head, and we're going to replace the inner valve springs, or put the inner spring back in, I should say. As you can see, there's no inner spring in these. These do have a dampener, and these springs don't have a lot of spring pressure, anyways. These things are only. Uh, Oh, I don't know, roughly 100 pounds on the seat. Hydraulic flat tappet cams don't need a lot of spring pressure. Let's take a look while we're in here and see what our uh, stem wear looks like. Perfect. That thing's almost dead center. That's from good geometry, and we'll do a video on showing you guys how to check uh, valve train geometry, too. All right, so what Brandon just did, we take our air hose and we take our compression testing hose, which is this uh, short one here, and then we take the uh, valve out of it that you use for the compressor, and then that way we can put air in cylinder. And of course, if your valves are sealed up like ours are, then you can uh, pull that spring off of there and the valve's not going to fall in the cylinder. We put positive seals on all our guides, even the exhaust guides. That's a simple tool. Just gives you a little bit of leverage so you can pull down on the spring. Because these things are not uh, real stout, it's not too hard to pull on. And that's what we do, is all that there is to it. And so we go along, we do all these on both sides. You can tell by the uh, sound of the uh, Show them that, uh, how we put that spring in there. Real simple, just slide right in there. It's not a big deal. But anyhow, what I was getting ready to say is that uh, you can tell by listening to the uh, uh, air escaping around the rings in this engine that this thing's sealed up pretty good already, and we haven't even broke the rings in. This just uh, roughly about half hour, 45 minutes of run time. But if you get your cylinder wall finished right, your rings will seat pretty quickly. This is a good <coughs> time to also test to make sure that the uh, intake and exhaust valves are sealed up too. We vacuum test all of ours so we know that they're sealed when we put the engine together. But uh, if you're doing this at home and you didn't do the valve job and don't have a way to vacuum test it, uh, this is a good way for you to find out. Because if you have an exhaust valve leaking, what's going to happen is you're going to hear it out of the exhaust pipe. If you got an intake valve leaking, obviously you're going to hear it through the carburetor. You'll hear a hissing sound. And that little bit of hiss that you're hearing right now, I don't know if you can hear that in this video or not, that's normal. That's the rings 
there's gaps on both ends of the ring, so you're going to get a little bit of an air escape by the ring, and there's, that's just the way it's supposed to be. Something else while we're in here taking a look at this, um, we highly recommend you put a 7 16 uh, rocker stud in any performance engine, even stock engines. Um, because you, if you don't, the uh, bottlenecks, they'll break whenever you put a higher lift cam in it. And this camshaft's, uh, this is what, probably 500 or 480? It's 477, 480. Okay, so right around 400, 480, 480 thousandths lift, just under a half inch. But stock factory cams only have right around 400 thousandths lift. They're 0 .407 usually on most of the, even the GTO cams, high performance cams. The only one that's got more lift is the Ram Air uh, 4 cam and uh, I think the Super Duty cams got more lift too. Then once we get this thing all done, then we readjust all the rockers on this thing and then we'll uh, fire it again just to make sure that uh, everything's okay and we'll run it for roughly another hour to make sure because typically when a cam goes bad, you're going to know within the first couple hours. The other thing you want to look for too is like in, inside the head after you've run it like we have this one, look at where the oil lays down inside here and see if you see any debris in there. You know. It, it, the oil gives you a, a real good indication of how healthy the engine is. So if you got uh, bearing going bad, you're going to see bearing material. If you got a cam going bad, you're going to see what looks like a bunch of grindings laying in there. Now this has got a casting flaw in here. This is That's factory. That's not anything that's abnormal. A lot of guys don't want to do this. They say it's a, too much of a pain in the butt to, to do, but as you can see, it's not that difficult with the right tools. It takes roughly about an hour, hour and a half to uh, change all the valves, or put all the valve springs back in, and uh, go back through the valves and readjust all the valves. This engine actually is the first engine we've built for a long time uh, with the flat taffet camshaft. We were staying away from them for a long time because we were having so much trouble with the lifters and cams failing. I mean, they'd literally fail within the first half hour of uh, break-in time. And uh, we didn't really honestly know for a while, but uh, there's a guy on YouTube, uh, Powell Machine, and uh, he actually regrinds the lifters. He did a test and he found out that it isn't the cams. The cams are still made, the flat tap of cams are still made in the United States and the cores are still coming from the same company in the United States. So it's not the camshaft and the hardness on the cams are fine. Uh, what, it, uh, what he found was is the lifters are actually hard like they're supposed to be too. They rock well right where they're supposed to be. But the problem is because the machine work is so shabby on them, uh, watch, his, watch his videos, he'll, uh, I'm going to have to go outside or go out here in uh, my retail, sorry about that guys, <laughs> my compressor came on, but anyways, um, so we, uh, uh, he found out that what's going on is the actual bottoms of the lifters don't have the proper taper on them and they got they're chattering um, there's just not enough um, or I mean it just it, it, the contact area is not correct so uh, he's re grinding the lifters and we had these reground these are actually brand new uh, uh, I'm not mention names but anyhow it's a brand new lifter hydraulic lifter and we uh, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to uh, see if this is going to be a solution or not and it seems to be so far this camshaft that we just put in uh, seems to be fine and uh, that's a good thing so maybe we can start using flat tap cams again but the uh, thing of it is is the uh, <laughs> is um, 
pal machine, I think he's going to quit doing it because he can't make enough money at it. I mean, you know, realistically, uh, if you charge 80 or $100 or whatever he's charging to regrind a lifter, uh, and it takes you a couple hours, it, you just can't pay your shop rate and you can't pay your bills doing that. So he's probably not going to do it anymore. As a matter of fact, I think he has the equipment for sale and he wants to sell it to somebody, the whole business operation actually. So if so any of you guys are interested in starting a little business at home out of your garage, might be a good little gig for you. This, I believe, is the numbers matching engine for uh, a 67 GTO that we're doing for a guy. That's an automatic, it's YS code, it's got the 670 heads on it, all the date codes match, it's got the correct distributor in it. The only thing that's not correct, I don't believe this is a correct carburetor, this is a 68 carb. guys make sure and check out our uh, podcast our bench racing podcast every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. <clears throat> on YouTube at uh, DCI Motorsports 1111 Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time yep